Hello, this is Nathan here, and you're watching Robot Masters. So, I finally have it, the LG Quad Zero R9 full in-depth review. Let's go ahead and just get right into this. Well, I had this guy for about, let's say, hmm, three weeks, a month, I can't recall. I got this guy recently. I do have a lot of robot vacuums that I compared this guy to. I got the Roborock. I also have the iRobot series, the Roomba S9, the Roomba i7, and I definitely got a feel of how this LG Quad Zero operates. So let me just jump from the very beginning, the unboxing experience. Well, the boxing was actually quite nice. It was kind of like one of those Apple box experiences where they definitely spent time making sure that you have a quality unboxing. The box itself was very high quality. It was really well packaged. There's nothing broken. And look, guys, I still have the packaging wrap on my LG. Yes, I'm one of those guys that leaves plastic wrap on the couch. I don't know. I'm just crazy. But anyways, let's go ahead and get back into it. What do I like about the LG Quad Zero on Well, first of all, I love the color paint scheme. I did choose red. I think it's called Bohemian Red. Uh, I think that's what they called it. But I call it the hot red because it's very unique. None of my other robot vacuums have different color choices in terms of like red. I have seen yellow robot vacuums, but mostly they're just black or white. Pretty plain looking, but this LG definitely stands out. I do like the silver accent for the camera system. And look at this guys, this has a cool little LED display. Something that's unique to this LG Quad Zero R9. There's not very many robot vacuums out there that has a display. And this is one of the few robot vacuums that incorporate this. Yes, I know that the Neato bot backs like the 80, the 75 had the little color display. But I really like this large display on the LG. Now, what I like about the LG besides the cool look is I like this front wide extractor bar. This is almost as big as the Neo uh, bot back I had. The Neo bot back actually had a wider extractor bar and I believe that the Roomba S9 has a little bit wider. But look at this guys, let me show you this. If I can take this out on camera. See that guys, look how big that is. It's just ginormous. And yes, I do have some pet hair on that, but it's pretty easy to remove it. All you have to do is just kind of pull on there. And look, it just comes right off, hopefully. See? Okay, I'm just yanking on that. See that, guys? Done. The hair is gone. Real easy. Alright, so here's a quick look at the robot itself. Pretty simple design. You got your rear caster right here. You got these giant wheels. This thing can literally climb a mountain. This thing transitions over carpet. I tested it, did quarter inch, did half inch, it even did a three quarter inch carpet, no problem. This guy definitely has some giant wheels to handle the terrain. Okay, let's go ahead and get this guy back together. It's pretty simple. You just find a little groove there, and it should just snap right into place. Done. Okay, let's get this guy back over. Now, another thing I like about this robot is it comes with its own dedicated remote. You see that? I cannot read what it says, but I got to try them out. You can change the voice, you can change the power setting. You can also control the robot via remote control. You have to go forward, have to go back, have to go left, right, pause, all these neat features for the robot. Also, this robot has a self-diagnostic mode, which is great in case you have an error. Let's say you have a sensor error and you don't know what's going on. Well, you run the self-diagnostic. The robot will actually check all its sensors for you, and if it pops up an error code, it will actually contact customer service. I haven't tried this feature, but that's what it claims to do. So, the next thing you can do is order parts for it. So, let's say your filter is about to expire. They usually last about three to six months, depending on how much dust you have. Well, the robot can use Amazon, I believe it's called Dash, where it will auto-replenish your uh, consumables, like the extractors, the filters, all that good stuff. Now, unfortunately, I live in Colorado and that service is not available. But hopefully, down the road, LG will implement that. Okay, anything else I like about it? Well, I do like the home guard feature. I did post one video, and I do apologize if that video was a little odd. It was kind of like a parody slash funny video, but it kind of showcased what this robot can do. You can access a live camera feed and just see what the robot sees. Kind of cool. So what I do sometimes is I'm at work, I'm like sitting at my desk, I'm bored, so I can actually tell the robot to go to my master bedroom, the robot will automatically drive there, I can watch what the robot sees, and I can check up on my house. It's great 
kind of like a spy tool. One thing to note is this guy does not have a microphone or a speaker, so you cannot communicate to your family members. Maybe in the LG R10 or the next version, they'll implement that two-way communication feature. Okay, what else do I like about this? Well, this tank does have decent suction. Uh, the battery life, I believe it is what? What is it? Two hours, 90 minutes? I'll definitely put all the specs that I know of down in the little description box. Okay, so what else do I like? Hmm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. So let's keep talking about the home guard. Another part of the home guard is it allows you to use motion detection. So what it does is it activates its video camera and if something goes by it, it will take five pictures. I did test this feature out and one odd quirk is once it activates its motion detection, it won't reset until you delete the five pictures off your phone. It's a very odd feature. So what if you have multiple traffic? Um, I guess it will take additional pictures, but it's kind of weird that it's only limited to uh, five pictures on your smartphone. I know that your smartphone can hold five pictures. Maybe it's putting the five pictures locally on the vacuum itself. I don't know, but it's kind of a weird limitation that only takes five pictures from the home guard. Until you delete the five pictures, then it resets and the motion camera is activated. Okay, um, let me talk about, I believe that's everything I like about, oh yeah, what about cleaning? How well does this thing clean since it's a robot vacuum? Well, I'll tell you, it cleans pretty good. Uh, it did get hung up on my Lucky Charm test. I actually did some cereal of Lucky Charms, put a bunch down, and it kind of got clogged up. I will probably put the description link video down below if I remember to. If not, I do have a playlist in my YouTube section you can check out. I try to do daily videos. I know this is kind of ridiculous, but that's how it is. Anyways, yeah, it did get hung up on the Lucky Charms. It did great on the Imperial Reds, these like smaller bits, red hot candies. Um, I haven't done a powder test. I'm still looking to find a suitable powder. I was going to do like brown sugar, but I felt it would be too messy. It gets sticky and may ruin the robot. So I'm still into that process. So stay tuned for that. Um, once I find a perfect powder, I will showcase that for my robot vacuums. Okay, let's see. What else is there? Cleaning performance, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. It's not the best performing robot vacuum in terms of just cleaning, but I would say it's up there. It does have decent suction. It's a powerful vacuum. It has like clone technology where it creates little cyclones. I don't know, maybe it's a marketing term, but I know Dyson has this technology and their vacuums tend to have really good suction. Uh, okay, now let's get to my dislikes. Uh, I think the biggest dislike about this robot vacuum, besides the price, um, I did pay about, what was it, like 700 bucks. It was a third party site, but I know just recently after I got this guy, uh, two or three months down the road, I waited for this guy to come to my house. eBay started offering these guys for around $1,100. So it's kind of a bummer that I paid so much and just found out that I can get this for a lot cheaper. But oh well, um, I will keep this guy. I love it for the security features. So besides the price, the main thing I don't like about this robot vacuum is the navigation. Um, it's kind of like the Roomba S9. So when I first started this channel, I had the Roomba S9. I constantly got comments saying, hey, uh, should I get the Roomba S9 or should I get the Roomba i7? I would say get the Roomba i7 because the Roomba S9 had terrible navigation. It would constantly bang up my furniture and it would constantly just not navigate what a thousand dollar robot vacuum should. Well, this is kind of like the same way. Even though it has really good navigation in terms of not bumping into things, it kind of gets lost. So what I mean by that is, let's say I tell it to go to my bedroom. Sometimes it goes to my bedroom flawlessly, does not have any navigation issues, but sometimes it just kind of goes into a weird path and it doesn't really go to the target point. Same as goes to the charging. If I tell it to go back to its charger, sometimes it does, sometimes it just kind of veers off. But one thing to know is if I stop the robot and I push the home button again, the robot goes straight to the charger. So maybe it's just a software bug. And I really think that this guy is a smart robot. It does have good navigation abilities. It just needs that tweaking. Maybe it's just the bugs. I don't know what it is. Hopefully LG's listening and they'll provide a solution with better navigation. I know that iRobot did this and they made the Roomba S9 110% better. It was just a phenomenal robot after a few updates and I hope they do this with the LG. Um, basically, they will push a couple updates and this guy will navigate perfectly fine. Um, 
Okay, let's see. What else do I not like about the LG? I think that was the biggest thing was the navigation. But let's talk about one other weird thing that I've never seen in a robot vacuum. It's the omission of the side brush. Okay, I can see why LG omitted it. Uh, because it looks really cool and slick and if you have two side brushes or a single side brush right there it, might, it would kind of look kind of funky but I really think that this guy needs a side brush because just relying on the suction power alone I did do a few tests and it wasn't quite enough to get the large bits. It may be able to get powder and fine small dirt and stuff but not for large like imperial candy. Uh, um, what else did I do? I did Skittles, it wasn't enough to get the Skittles either. So it really does need a side brush, and LG has made robots in the past, the LG HomeBot. And it had a dual side brush system, and it was a different design, it was more like a square robot. But anyways, I think they should bring back the side brush, because even though this is a cool looking robot, I'd much rather have it perform better than what it looks like. Okay, so I think that's everything for now. I don't want this video to be too long, but if you like this type of like review style video, please smash the like button because it helps me gauge if this video is popular or not. Also, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Nathan. I do a lot of crazy robot reviews, unboxings, overviews. I do challenges, head to heads. You name it, I do everything that pertains to robot vacuums and robot mops. So you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys next time.